Hey my friend, today I'm going to show you two game-changing four chord movements that you can use in your songs because it sounds awesome. So what do I mean by the movements of the four chord? Because in all keys, we are going to contextualize the chords of that key by giving them a function with Roman numerals. So for example, if I am in the key of A major and I play an A major chord, that chord is going to be my root chord and I'm going to use the number one in Roman numerals for that. If the Roman numeral is in uppercase, that's a major chord and if it's in lowercase, that's a minor chord. So if I have an uppercase one in Roman numerals, it means that I play A major in my A major key. And if I have a lowercase one, I'm going to play A minor in my A minor key right? And then to find the four chord of that key in Roman numerals, I just have to go up my scale until I find the fourth note and then I'm going to build the same structure as my root chord. So if I come back in the key of A major, I'm going to go up my A major scale. One, two, three, four. And from that fourth note, I build the same structure. So if my root chord was in major, I'm gonna build a major chord from the fourth note. So in my case, I get A major and D major. So that's the movement from the one to the four in major. And the same goes in minor. So if I start from A minor, I gotta find the fourth note up of my minor scale. One, two, three, four. And from that note, I'm gonna build the same structure. So I'm gonna build a minor chord this time. So from A minor to D minor. So that's the standard way to do it. If you are in major, you keep your root and four chords in major. And if you are in minor, you keep your root and four chord in minor. But many, many composers are going to use that interchangeably. Meaning that even if they start on the root chord in major, they can use the four chord in minor after and vice versa versa and it creates super nice colors that you can use pretty easily without going knee deep in music theory and mode mixture and stuff like this. That's pretty easy to implement. So first example, let's say I start with my A major chord. So I'm supposed to be in the major key. So the four chord is supposed to be D major. But now I can use D minor if I want. And that adds a little color, a little tension, uh, like this. It sounds cheesy sometimes, but there are some contexts to use that. So what I like to do is to use simple triads so that it's really easy to play. So if I strip down my A major chord to its essentials, I'm going to play only the triad on the fourth, third and second strings like this. So that's my A major triad. And then if I want to go to my minor four, I can just do that. So it's like the, the D minor bar chord from the fifth string, but I'm just going to remove my bar and keep the notes in the middle. You see how easy it is to play. Because there's a note that stays in place and this creates a nice tension like this that goes up and down from one semitone on both strings. So that's really nice. Another place I like to play it is on the D shape. Your D open chord, you just uh, are going to remove the open fourth just to keep the fretted notes. And if you want to go to the minor four, you can just bar on the third fret.
I think it's something that's used a lot in Christmas music, I believe, so that's why we think it can sound cheesy sometimes, but it's really, really nice to use it. And you don't have to use the root chord and the four chord one after another. It can be in a whole chord progression. So for example, I could play my root chord, my five chord, which is E, then my six chord, which is F sharp minor, and instead of using the regular four chord, I could use the minor four, and that's gonna add a little flavor in it. So uh, first I'm gonna play the regular version with the normal major four chord. It's super standard, but now if I use the minor four chord at the end, that's gonna be special. Nice tension here. And I said that you can do vice versa. You can start with the minor root chord and use the major four chord after it. And it's like the bright side of a minor scale. So if I use A minor, it's supposed to be D minor if I use the four chord. But instead I'm gonna use D major. And it just opens up your minor scale in the way that sounds brighter. So once again, you can use simple triads. So I could use my minor triad like this. So it's like my A bar chord, but from, uh, again, it's uh, keeping the fourth, third, and second strings. And then you can bar on the seventh fret. And if I start from the D shape, like I showed you uh, on the major version, you can start with a D minor. Open chord, once again, you let go of the open fourth just to keep the fretted notes. And then you can slide to uh, that little shape right here. So it's the shape of a G bar chord, but I'm just keeping the top three strings. So that's super common in a minor key to see the major four chord. The first example that, that comes to my mind when I hear that, and there are hundreds of examples, but to me, this is Tears for Fears, Mad World, right? This one. So this is exactly what they're doing. It's all over this song. The root chord, which is in that case, F sharp minor. But then they go to the four chord, one, two, three, four, and then they build a major chord instead of a minor chord, which is B major in that case. It's like all over this song, right? So that's the example that comes to mind and it's everywhere. And once again, you could use a whole chord progression with that. So I could do a root chord, uh, yes, like this, A minor, and then five chord, E minor, and then my six chord in minor, which is F, which I call the flat six to remove ambiguity. And then I would use the major four, so D major, like this. It's, it opens up the chord progression, it's brighter suddenly. So there you go, two game-changing movements. Use the major root chord and then the minor four chord, or use the minor root chord and then the major four chord. And you're gonna use some little colors here and there where you are borrowing from another key, but you don't need to go deep into music theory. That's quite easy to implement. And I hope that you're gonna use that in your own songs. And if you wanna go further with me and it's your first time on the channel, I'm offering a free mini course to all of my viewers that you can take first link in the description box. I'm showing you the most 
most popular ambient guitar chords that are called spread triads. You can download the chord charts, the exercises, there are many video lessons and it's totally for free and in that we go a little bit deeper into Roman numerals and that stuff. So if you want to go further with me and you enjoyed the lesson, once again, first link in the description box to get my free course. Thanks for watching and until next time, au revoir.